it's been a few weeks since we did a video and I'm sorry that uh, we've been extremely busy and I got a little bit overwhelmed with uh, working two gardens and um, I would just forget to bring the the camera out and shoot what I was doing so um, anyways and my boys got sick so I was a little bit um, overwhelmed but um, I am back again and uh, bringing you guys I'm going to show you around the garden a little bit and show you what has changed since that last garden tour so I'm gonna turn you around <laughs> when I gonna get started okay so as you can see some of my corn has pretty much finished so I will be needing to cut those stalks but as you see we do still have some corn right there and we're going to be harvesting that today as well as our tomatoes um look at those tomatoes i also have a really pretty sunflower right there um it's not super tall and it's not really thick stemmed but it is beautiful nonetheless um but look i have tomatoes all over these plants and if you okay so we had to put stakes we had to tie up stakes beside our stakes because the our t-posts are um they're six foot t-posts um and that did not do it and so we had to purchase eight foot stakes and as you can see the plants are actually already to the top and actually coming over the eight foot stakes so I suppose um, once we're gonna tie them up at least one or two more times well Nick will because he's the tallest um, he has already gone through here and harvested some of our tomatoes but I just want you to see like, down through here all these tomatoes and in with the tomato plants look at these marigolds our, these marigolds are absolutely gorgeous so they've gotten really big and bushy now I do have weeds in between and stuff there's a mess back in here because I just have there were some things that had to be um, there were some things that we had to let go and um, weeds back behind the tomato plants and in between the tomato plants and the corn was what got um, lost. But anyways, um, look, if you see right there, look at that. There's our other, one of our other sunflowers and there's a bee. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's kind of hard to see with this lighting, but I don't, cause it's shaded out a little bit. Cause, <laughs> But it's a, yeah, lots and lots of pollinators out here. So, um, I do want to show you a couple things here too. It's kind of funny. This right here, this tomato plant was labeled as an Amish paste and it is clearly not. Um, I'm not sure exactly what it is. But it was, um, whenever I planted the seeds, this was planted with my Amish paste. So I'm not sure, I really am not sure what that is. But anyways, so it is what it is. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out. If not, it's fine. Um, we have gotten some really massive Amish paste this year. Um, like this one is one of the ones that's going to be really big, um, but that we've had bigger than this one as well, but yeah, they're, they're growing really well. And there's one of them that's almost ready to be picked right here. We'll probably actually go ahead and pick it, um, and let it turn the rest of the way inside because we do have trouble with some, um, pests and everything. 
And right back here are our slicer tomatoes. These here are Better Boy out here. And then we've got Black Beauty beside those and Dr. White's beside those. And I'll show you what we have there. But before I do, these are some determinate tomatoes I'm trying this year from Haas Tools. Now some of the um, some of the leaves and stuff are, are damaged and we did have a tomato hornworm come through and uh, try to eat away at one of them. We have bracketed uh, wasps around this and around my house. And so if you guys know anything about bracketed wasps, they often will lay their eggs in the, um, the hornworm. Oh, the actual yep. garden tour yep. now? Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so um, Nick's going to continue to uh, pick tomatoes while um, I'm talking to you guys. But um, what have we been busy doing the last couple weeks at Nick? Working at our grand my grandparents' house, getting their garden picked. Yeah, we've been working at my parents' house. Um, and my parents, they, they don't want to do you know, any part of the video. So I, um, respect that. Um, anyways, I was telling you guys about the bracketed wasps. So bracketed wasps, um, they will lay their eggs inside the, um, the tomato hornworm or whatever, uh, caterpillar they find, whatever host that they can find. The bracketed wasps will lay the, the eggs down inside the caterpillar the larva will eat the insides of the caterpillar and then they will pop out to the surface and spin a cocoon so when you see these pictures of tomato hornworms with the little white um, what a lot of people call them eggs but they're not the eggs those are actually the cocoons that the wasps are going to come out of but the bracketed wasp had taken care of it so I just left it alone and it eventually fell off. These are my tomatillos. I did, I thought that I only had um, green tomatillos, but I found that I actually had both, I mean, I thought that I only had purple, but I found that I actually have more green than um, purple. Okay, so there are my Black Beauty tomatoes, and I do have that one right there that needs to be picked. Um, but they're really beautiful. I love the black shoulders. Well, actually, they're really more purplish than black, but whenever they start ripening, they will get almost a black tone to them. Mm -hmm. Very pretty. And as you can see, there's um, there's plenty of tomatoes on here. Um, well, you might not be able to see them very well, but and then there's blossoms where there's little ones that are growing. This fruits ha fruit has set, so we should get some more. Um, there's plenty of blossoms towards the top too, so I'm re I'm excited about those. And let me show you my cherry tomatoes. Right, there's some of the cherry tomatoes. We do, like I said, we do have a tendency to take our cherry tomatoes or actually all of our tomatoes, we pick them just slightly um, where, they're, where they're either just starting to ripen or, um, you know, just a little bit riper than this sometimes. Um, but we do gen have a tendency to pick them before they turn. And that's because we do have an issue with birds and other animals that try to get them. Now this plant right here. So this plant right here was supposed to be a, um, a black cherry tomato plant. It is obviously not. The tomatoes are way too large for that. I believe it's another better boy tomato plant which is fine. I just would have single stemmed it more had there been, had I known that that was the case, but it's okay. Um, these are the black cherries and these are so beautiful and we really love, 
we really love these um, as a family. They're one of our favorites. So I was kind of bummed out that, you know, we only had one, one plant. However, um, they are super productive. The, the plant looks absolutely gorgeous and I don't really see any sickness or anything to it. So we should get quite a bit of them. So we, we'll just have to argue over who's going to get the black cherry tomatoes. Nick says he's going to have it. Okay, so I did get this area cleaned up for the most part. There's still a little bit of stuff that needs to be done. But, um, so I moved over all of my herbs with the exception of the ones in the grow bags that I, um, with the exception of the herbs that I have in my grow bag over the, my newest grow bags from Roxley, those herbs I have left over there for the time being. Um, I have not harvested any of my lemon balm this year because... I really can't use it myself personally so the only ones that can use it in my household are my kids and my husband and my husband doesn't drink tea so um, I finished one round of potatoes and I went ahead and came back through and planted more potatoes so my potatoes that were in the shade did not do very well um, I mean they did okay but they didn't produce a ton and so, um, so basically, I just planted more plants. Um, my chives, as you see, are blossoming. And my sweet potato slips that I had to go and purchase, um, I had purchased some from a, a seed company, and they sent them out plenty of time. But the post office decided to send them all over the place before they sent them here even though it was a straight shot so instead of going because they went to our Charlotte distribution center and then instead of coming straight here they went to South Carolina then DC and then back to here so that's not the seed company's fault that is the US postal system and and they were marked as live plants so the US postal system did, knew better but Anyways, so I purchased some slips, and they're looking great, and um, I can't wait to harvest these. Okay, so these are um, the tomato plants and the flowers and the chamomile that I have obviously let open up too long, but I need to harvest what I have anyways even though it's not the ideal time. Like I, I let them open up too much so that it doesn't really have petals, but I'm still gonna harvest it even though it's not the uh, ideal. Um, and I'm gonna still use it, so. Um, but my marigold, my basil, my oregano and basil, my rosemary, they all look fabulous in these bags. And I will say, so far, I really like them I do have to water them less often okay so my kale has taken a beating but I have left it as a cat as a um, catch crop because they the the Japanese beetles seem to really like to eat it so instead of it eating my other plants as much, they have a tendency to eat that before. So I'm good with that. So I have my calendula has opened up. I have deadheaded some already and collected some to take inside to dry out. These are my Cleopatra mix. Um, so it's, it's what my mom would call scarlet, scarlet sage. Um, then I have more calendula down here. They're opening up, blossoming really pretty. This one is, um, I believe it's a strawberry blonde one, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and so I have more that I've opened up over here. Yep. So 
There are things in here other than calendula. I have had some really pretty um, snapdragons that blossomed. But anyways, so, you know, I, the, but the majority is calendula because I do use that. I will dehydrate the heads and I will um, put them in oil and that kind of thing and uh, then use it on my skin. So. Okay, so it's kind of hard to see because of the lighting in this area right now. It's the sun is coming in at a weird angle. But um, so these bean plants, even though they look really rough with the leaves, some of the leaves have had some disease and then others have just been eaten. You know, that's Japanese beetle. And um, my dad just calls them uh, bean beetles. That's what he calls them, bean beetles. Um, we've had some, it was funny because whenever the larva is generally yellow, but when they're eating these um, purple teepee beans or the royal burgundy beans, they become a pinkish purplish color instead. So that's really interesting that I found. I, I haven't sprayed these, but they are still blossoming. If you can see, there's lots of blossoms in there. Um, so they're, they're continuing to, um, to make beans, even though they look rough. And my top crop beans are looking the same. The only ones right now so far that don't look like this, the Royal Burgundy beans right here, their leaves are still really nice and pretty and these top crop beans these did not get the damage that um that these did as you see these are pretty damaged however if you look right there all of that is new growth so they're coming back i will get more beans from these and i see some beans that were missed over there so there's some beans down in there so in this bag and in this bag over here so these two bags I planted bush baby llama beans and they do have some shoots as you see they have some shoots but they are bush bean, so they won't get super tall. Um, but they, these are bush baby lima beans. And um, so we like those for soups and stews and stuff too. And so um, we're going to see how they do here. Now my mom and dad have some planted as well, but um, they're a backbreaker. If, you're, if you have the bush baby lima beans, they're a backbreaker to pick so i prefer if we grow them to grow them here because they're up higher and we don't have to bend over quite as far to pick them um so anyways we'll see if they do really good here then maybe we won't have to do them at my mom and dad's anymore okay so these are my um variety of pepper plants the majority of my pepper plants look pretty good. There are some that look extraordinarily good like these. These are um, Pueblos. Uh, these are these are not supposed to be the hottest of the Pueblo uh, peppers. Um, they're actually supposed to be a medium, a medium heat. So um, I don't know. We'll see. My Tabasco plants look really beautiful. They've got lots and lots of little blossoms. Um, so hopefully we can, because my husband and my kids really, really loved the um, Tabasco sauce that I made two years ago and we are all out. So I need to make some more. Um, so hopefully we'll get enough to do that. But if we can't make just pure uh, Tabasco sauce, then I hope that I can um, get enough hot peppers to make some. And I think that I will because I have lots of, I'll show you in a, in a minute, 
what other hot peppers that I have that are growing really well and producing. So over here though, let me show you guys. This is a scotch bonnet and I have not seen a pepper plant that has this kind of, I mean it is a beautiful, gorgeous, It's it started out really super stocky, stocky and um, now it's got a really, really thick thick stalk and um, anyways it hasn't flowered yet although it looks like it's going to begin doing that soon um, but it just has a, a different growing pattern and the leaves are huge but um, then these are my Italian pepperoncinis and they are loaded with blossoms and we've already gotten quite a few Italian pepperoncinis off of here. Beside here um, are my hatch peppers and I have um, a Carolina Reaper. Now the Carolina Reaper right there. Uh, the Carolina Reaper looks better than the hatch hot peppers. Those are the ones that are pretty much famous in New Mexico. You see hatch peppers in the grocery stores and stuff. Um, Pueblos are along the same lines as hatch but my husband you know he swears that the pueblos are better we'll see <laughs> now this um, one these right here i have not done anything different with these peppers as opposed to other peppers so like soil wise or anything but these are absolutely gorgeous these are the ahi pineapple and as you see there's tons of blossoms and down in there, there's tons of peppers on these plants. Like I said, I've done nothing different <laughs> between any of these plants. But this, these plants right here, there's three plants here together. And they are bushy plants. They start out bushy from the very, from the very beginning. Um, probably just their growing habit but my goodness they are prolific and then in this bag I have these fish peppers which are absolutely stunning I love variegated plants um, and they produce a small pepper that is really spicy but it's really good and then these are um, there's a lemon drop pepper right there and then on the other side is sugar rich peach and I've gotten a couple of peppers from in here I haven't gotten a whole lot but there's lots of blossoms okay and I have this one lone onion that is still growing its neck still has not um, you know it's not bent over so I'm letting it continue to grow um, but I will say that these have been extremely good onions, and I've been very, very, very happy with it. I'm excited that I figured out how to grow onions, because um, it's huge. Like, that's a, that's, that would fill my ha whole hand, and I've gotten a couple more, and they were all huge. Alright, and on this side, where I have my strawberries planted, these strawberries that I planted on this end because I have some on this end over here and some on these on this end are gene bearing so they're done they're not gonna make any more strawberries um, this on this end are ever bearing and as you can see let me see if I can zoom in on it As you can see, I do have strawberries that are um, forming again. And there's more dianthus, but I think that the dianthus is pretty much done this season. But there's blossoms on my strawberries and more strawberries forming. And I will say that I've had a lot of... Um, baby strawberry plants put down roots so they have propagated themselves pretty well already this season and this is their first year being here so 
I'm excited about that because that means that maybe next year we'll have a really good harvest. This year we had um, quite a bit of bug damage because of slugs. Okay, so the next thing that I have to do is I'm going to be planting some lettuce. I got some heat tolerant lettuce varieties from Hostels. And um, so I'm going to try planting some of those. Um, it is only around 8 o'clock. It's a little bit after 8 this morning. It's not even hot out here. It's like 70-ish, 70, maybe 74 degrees out here. But it is so humid that it makes it that much hotter. So, um, thankfully I don't have to water my plants because normally I have to water my plants every morning because it's just not rained very much. But we had some rain because of a tropical storm that went through on the outside, on the coast. So it pushed some rain our way, thankfully. Um, so I don't have to water my garden. I just need to plant and get some of this lettuce planted so that um, we can start enjoying some some fresh grown salads. And um, anyways, and then I need to can some tomato sauce that I already have. Work, I've been working on it already and I just have to get it finished so catch my breath and let's go right that's 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 this time of year this time of year is okay I gotta keep going <laughs> so anyway so thank you guys so much for spending time with us today as you see we've got a lot to do and like I said we're doing this garden plus my mom and dad's garden and um, so we're busy. We're over at my mom and dad's house every other day. So every other day I am here full time working on my own garden. So anyways, thank you guys so much for spending time with us today and we'll see you soon.